Stories has the power to change lives. Stories have the power to inspire. Stories have the power to motivate. Now, many years back, I was never very comfortable on saying my story. I always kept on thinking, I am no Mark Zuckerberg to tell my story. Who am I? How successful am I? But then one day, another Mark, one person named Mark Brown, who was a public speaking champion in Toastmasters International, in one of his sessions he said, tell your stories because you never know, there might be someone sitting in the corner where you are speaking, who needs your story? Because this person doesn't connect to a Mark Zuckerberg or a Steve Jobs. This person connects with you. This person is as simple as you are. And from then onwards, I have never really shied away from saying my story. And today also, I'm not going to shy away. So I'm going to share a story and here it goes. Once upon a time, there was this handsome man. I can see in most of your eyes that you're thinking he's not saying his story. He's not that handsome. Well, let's start again. Let's see. Once upon a time, there was this handsome man who had two sons. And he tried his best giving the best of life to this person, to his sons. And out of the two, the elder one was a bit privileged. Reason is, the elder one was four years elder to the younger son. So obviously he got everything four years before, minimum. And that elder, moderately handsome son is me. <laughs> well, uh, life was going wonderfully. And my father was doing his best to give us a good life. My mother was a housewife, but she also gave her best to give us a wonderfully crafted life. And we were happy in our own zone. But there came a time when my father got diagnosed with cancer. And things started falling apart. Things weren't like before. My father still tried to do whatever he could. He was still going to the office. He was still trying to earn enough to give us a good life. But then again, he was getting tired, he was getting weak. There came a time when my father had to actually take eight to nine months of rest because he was going for the most affordable and available treatment there was at that time. I don't know what happened to me. I suddenly went to my father and I said, I want to join office. And to my mother's surprise, my father said yes. And my mom was looking at him like this. What are you saying? He's just 17. But my father, I don't know why, was confident enough to say, OK, go ahead. And I decided. I'm like, OK, that's it. I am going to the office. I didn't know what was coming ahead. I went to the office. And my training started without me even understanding the training was starting. So the training started like this. My father would call me. Yes. So can you go and check why the feeling of the sweater is not good? I'm like, sweaters feel or what? How can garments feel? So I was totally shocked. I'm like, did the sweater have fever or caught cold? How can, how can sweater catch cold? It's sweater after all. So I see, OK. I'll call you back after checking. I leave the phone and I go to the person working under me. Mark my words, under me. At that time, I did not even know the meaning of teamwork. So I went to our production manager and I asked, what is the problem with the sweater feeling not right? And he says, sir, it's the feel which comes after you wash the sweater. I'm like, OK. So these were things I was trying to learn on the go. And my father would call from home and ask me these questions. Initially, it was very tough. I was not able to understand what I was doing, but I was not giving up. 
because I thought giving up was not an option. My father wasn't well, and as the elder son, I had something to do, and I tried. Within a short time, the answers started being a bit easier for me. It wasn't like before. So even when he called, I could actually answer because I was learning. I was learning from anyone and everyone who was present. I was learning from people who were in the lower level, in the middle level, in the higher level, everyone. I was trying to learn anything and everything which was coming in front of me. And I think things were kind of falling in place because my father was happy that I was able to go to the office and do things. So eight or nine months passed like that. The time just passed. And my father came back to the office after doing his eight to nine months of treatment. And then I became the briefcase bearer for my father. Wherever he was going, I would go after him. Mind you, I was continuing with my studies even when I was doing all this job. But it was very nice, you know, going after him with the briefcase in hand. It was my father's briefcase and I used to carry it with pride. I used to love doing that. When he came back to office, he never tried to train me saying, okay, Zahid, you have to do this or that to be successful in life. He wasn't doing anything as such. But I was learning from what he was doing. I was trying to understand why he does what he does. So I was trying to learn and things were going good and we were planning that things will be better in the factory. So many other things, but things changed in 2004. 19th of September, my father left us and I didn't know what to do. I just had no idea what is to be done. He taught me a lot of things without even trying to teach me, but he never taught me how to live without him. He never taught me how to pay off the liabilities when he's not around. His one phone call to the bank would make a difference, but me even going in the bank and sitting for the whole day did not make a difference. But then again, I was not in a position to give up. Giving up was not an option. I had to take care of my family, my mother, my brother, and I had to make sure that I somehow get the name of my father out from the liability list in the bank. And I kept on trying. I gave up something. I gave up my university life. And a lot of my critics or even family members, they said he is leaving studies because he doesn't like studying. What they did not understand was I was leaving the best time of my life, my youth, which never came back, that time never came back in my life. But I was okay to do that. Things started moving and all I did was I was working hard. Many people actually come to me asking today that what was your strategy? What did you do? How did you overcome so many things in the age of 20? I tell them nothing. <laughs> I did not have a strategy. There are people who ask me, did you go to a financial advisor? I say, no. At that time, I did not know there are financial advisors. All I did was hard work, my dear friends. I did not shy away from working hard. And I was trying to learn every day. I was, as I said, I was learning from anyone and everyone. In about 2009 or 10, things started being better and half of the liabilities were gone and we came into a situation where I felt that if we sell this one land, at least I'll come back to zero from minus, minus 5.5 crores to be precise. And we did that. So somewhere in 2010, I came back into zero. From zero, I started. But trust me, starting anything new is not easy. And in a place like Bangladesh where it takes time to get things done. It's not easy. Even getting that trade license, the new trade license, or a permission to be able to transfer LCs, it took a lot of time. But eventually, we reached there. By 2014 or 15, things were better. Mind you, 
We did talk about a lot of dropouts today, right? So my mother had this fear that if I did not finish my education, no matter how successful I become, I won't be able to get married. So meanwhile, she also made me finish my education. I tried to do whatever I could, and eventually I finished my education as well. So 2014-15, things are good. I am relatively successful, and I am driving a second-hand SUV, and I am thinking I'm smart. I have done it. Am I successful today? My measurement of successful, being successful is actually happiness. I don't measure my success with the money I have in the account. As long as I'm happy, I am successful. It might not be true for all of you or many of you, but it is okay. You measure success in your own way, and that is fine. It's absolutely <laughs> fine. Friends, uh, there will be times when you are demotivated. There will be times when you are frustrated. There will be times when failure gets you and you don't want to wake up from your sleep because you know when you wake up, you will face more failures. And that's okay. That is not something which is new. We all have faced it. I have recently faced it in 2022. After COVID, it was very tough to come back to business. It wasn't easy. There were times my wife would push me out of the house say, saying, go to the office. I don't want to see your face at home. There have been times like that because I was not really feeling like going to the office. Failures were coming up and up. But things changed. All you have to do is not give up it is very important that you keep on trying you cannot say okay i give up and the next day success will come to you saying okay don't give up i am here no it will never happen you have to keep on pursuing what you want to achieve i know many of you here are trying your best to be successful many of you are students who want to be successful when you are out of your student life. All I can say is whenever you feel down, find that one inspiration, that one motivation which can get you up. If you don't help yourself, nobody is going to help you. Because until you are breathing, giving up is not an option.